uh, we're at Gallico Soda Pop Stop. You know, we go back to 1897 in Los Angeles, at this location back to 1955. Oh, it is. We have everything you can't find. If you can find it, we don't carry it. That's, that's where it begins. And then it's up to you to decide what you're looking for or what you're, you haven't been looking for, but you found. You know, we started all of this about 20 years ago. You have to remember 20 years ago, all the little, there weren't any little bottlers around. They were all gone. And we were the ones that were responsible for bringing them all back and getting them on the shelf. And the key was, we just told every little bottler, hey, don't worry about the guy next to you. The little bottler next to you on the shelf is gonna help sell your products. And you're gonna help sell his products. And it's gonna be good for everyone. Right. And that's exactly what happened. We, we, we started it. Right. I mean, there's nobody like us. Everybody comes to take a look to find out what to do, I guess. Right. <laughs> I think there's more now than there have been. Right. But when corporate gets involved in them, it, it's, it's not a good thing right. because all the individuality disappears out of the uh, thing where they become, oh, a candy company is doing the distribution. So now all of a sudden they have more candy than they have sodas. That type of thing starts taking place. We have a soda creation station and you can go back there and mix anything you want. All you got to do is have an idea of what you like. And there's about a hundred different flavors back there. And then that, everybody thinks that, you know, that, oh, this is a big thing just in the United States, but we've had people travel from Australia and Japan. As a matter of fact, this one fellow came in, this was several years back, and he had this newspaper in his back pocket and it was in black and white and I could see it was a, a picture that was taken here and I said, excuse me, um, um, I see you, you have a newspaper in your back pocket but it's in black and white and all of the ones I've seen here are in color. Oh, well, I, when I was at the airport in Tokyo I picked up a copy of the Tokyo Times and I knew I was coming to Los Angeles so I thought I'd come but this is the Tokyo Times. That, ha that had that same article. As a matter of fact, there was a video that was done several years back, and, I, and, and the fellow said, oh, that, that uh, YouTube video you have, Obsessive, it's really, uh, it's, it's doing quite well on the internet. And I said, yeah, I think it has about six, 700,000 hits right now. Mm -hmm. And there was a lady standing behind the fellow, and when we got through with our conversation, she says, excuse me, but I'm from Holland, and you have over a million hits and your, your video was number one in Holland six weeks in a row, oh, wow. the most viewed That's video. That's and I'm awesome. going, this is all because of the internet? The internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they don't know we have wine. Uh -huh. and, and if you look at our wine section, all of our French wines are picked by a, a Grand Sommelier. The Italian wines, Italy has 800 different varietals of grape growing. Mm -hmm. and we have varietals that people here don't even know exist and that's what i encourage them to, to buy try this try that okay. one year we got a hold of some uh some wine and believe it or not n nobody knew what it was mm -hmm. and, and i tasted it and then i went out and did some research on it i found out that that wine that was so delicious was the uh the wine of the roman emperors oh, wow. I mean, it's been there in Italy, but here nobody knows anything about it. And I'm going, oh my goodness. That's great. We tried to get some more, but <laughs> the fellow the fellow was in and he calls the, the winery direct and says, hey, we don't have any more and we, we really need some more. And the guy says, well, I got the mafia sitting out here and they won't let, a, let the tractors in or the harvesters, excuse me, something like that. Right, right. But that, wow. was, that was funny, but boy. But, and by the way, it was a Magliocco grape. Oh, wow. And nobody knows what a yeah, Maglioco no grape idea. is. <laughs> oh, we have candies, we have the old toys, everything you can't find. Right. We have beers, we have 700 different kinds of beers from all over. And most of those are, are I don't carry Budweiser. Uh -huh. And I'm not taking up my shelf space with, with any of those. Uh, I have to have something that you can't find. You something go. that's new for you something that's better than what you're used to and that's what we do.
because there's so much variety, like we have 85 different root beers, and, and if it's the common question, what is the best? And I said, you know, I'm sorry, I can't answer that question because I don't know what the best is. There's only one person who knows, and that's you. So after you try 85, let me know. <laughs> and I'll tell everybody what your best yeah, is. Right. That's great. And yeah, because they're so different. You know, root beers have totally changed over the years. But we also have other little bottlers that have done things with their products to make them better. Mm -hmm. Not make more money, but mm -hmm. make them better. Wow, that's great. And I said that for a reason, what I'm saying. Okay. A lady from Coca-Cola came in and she says, you know, if we can reduce the price of Coca-Cola by a half a cent, we will add an extra billion dollars to our bottom line a year. And I looked at her and I said, you keep doing that and pretty soon people are going to forget why they bought Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola used to have a bite. Mm -hmm. No young people today have ever tasted that Coca-Cola. It was so incredible. Mm -hmm. By the way, let's go a step farther behind that. When Coca-Cola did New Coke, Old Coke, the reason why they were able to do it is because the fellow that ran Coca-Cola for like 50, 60 years, he passed away. And the whole time, from the very beginning, he told them, you will not touch the recipe of Coca-Cola until after I die. Six months after he died, it was new Coke, old Coke, and it was a totally different, it changed completely. But their profit margins went up so they could advertise more and, and have a better product or tell everybody they had a better product. What happened with Coca-Cola is they eliminated the cane sugar. That was major. Then they eliminated lemon and orange from their formula. And I found another soda that had lemon in it. And I tasted it and I go, ooh, it grits your teeth just like Coca-Cola used to. And it only had lemon, it didn't have the orange. Coca-Cola had both lemon and orange. And I tasted it and I go, oh my goodness, this is delicious, absolutely delicious. And I, and I called them and I said, you've got to keep doing it. Put, put a little more in. Put a little more lemon in that. You know, you'll have to come in and see it for yourself. We get a lot of people coming in and they look around and they go, this is really cool. And I say, this is not a place you can shop online. You, you, you'll miss the whole thing. You have to be here to experience it. You can't experience it on the Internet.